some data at the moment is saying 10 million people are suffering from anxiety. And in the UK, in the UK, or the or the, in the UK, just in the UK. I mean, and I mean, and you know, it's crazy because it's not possible. <laughs> so let, let me ask let me ask you something then, which is almost like the opposite of what you and I have just been talking about then. Then and um, and I guess uh, you know probably you know not a particularly PC question in in, in today's world, but you, obviously you talk about the fact that after your episode. Uh, you kind of, uh, you know, you you didn't fix it, and you just and you, and you just got back on with it and went back to work. Because yeah. I was talk, I was talking about the fact that you know I didn't even identify. I was I was even stressed at, stressed at that yeah. point, and and, and, yeah. and and like lived in denial. Let's say, for me, I feel there's a massive culture of the opposite of that nowadays. That you know everybody's got anxiety. Everybody's got you, know, and it's almost like. I'm not going to say fashionable, but you know, any time any anyone has a problem of, of of any of any minor degree of magnitude, it's almost like a get out to say, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've got an anxiety, I've got an anxiety issue, or I've got a mental health issue. When you know, I mean, ultimately, you know, in many aspects of life, many aspects of business, the bottom line is, you know, that they are going to be high pressure, high 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 stress things. You know, if if you want to get well paid to do a job or either if you're going to be a, a doctor in a stressful environment or you're yeah. just going to be a successful business person or you want to be a lawyer and work the deadlines etc you know these things undoubtedly come with deadlines you know which which bring pressure but but are mm. to a degree part 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 of real you know real the real world and I'm not for one minute, uh, you know, uh, pl- pl- playing down, you know, real people with real problems. But what, sure. what, what's your what, what's your opinion? I mean, what is your opinion on, on, yeah, on, so on that? I, yeah. that you know, nowadays, everyone just uses it as a, as an excuse to not do what they need to do. Uh, yeah, listen. Um, OK, so um, a, a couple of points I'd make on that. I think the first point is about language and how we describe things. And I think you're absolutely right that there's a problem because there's different things. There's there's a uh, there's a mental health condition when you're suffering from se- severe depression, and then they're saying I'm feeling depressed, and they're obviously not the same at all. Um, there's a difference for, for feeling anxious and actually suffering from uh, anxiety as a mental health condition. So what I would say is that um, if if you took a sort of the, the entire population. By far the biggest two topics on mental health generally for, say, 95 percent of the population are anxiety and depression. And I would say of that 95 percent of the population, a very small percentage have a mental health condition whereby it's more than, as you say, uh, what we expect. Everyday stressors, learning to cope with them, ways of dealing with self-care. And there's been a confusion because the two things have got muddled up, partly because the language isn't clear. And what I would say for that very large cohort, which is some 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 data at the moment is saying 10 million people are suffering from anxiety. And in the UK, in the UK or the or the, in the world? UK, just in the UK. I mean, and I mean, and you know it's crazy because it's not possible. <laughs> people, um, first of all, they're not suffering from anxiety in the way that it's a medicalized condition which completely is debilitating and you cannot lead your life, you cannot do your job. That is a very different thing. Um, I think I think we've got to be really careful now that that big, you know, as it as I say, there's sort of the 95 percent. We don't go down a kind of medicalized solution. We don't label them as having a mental health condition. We can be sympathetic and alongside people and say, yes, people have stressful lives, but there are really good ways of looking after yourself a bit better. That does not mean to say you have a mental health problem. You do not have a mental health condition. You do not necessarily have to go on any kind of medication and you do not have to bother the NHS. For most of those people, the big change, and you and you already nailed it, is relationships at work. So for people who are in work, uh, I mean, obviously your mental health is affected by your life at home, uh, other, other areas where you basically spend your time. But for a lot of that big main cohort, if we had a more supportive and encouraging workplace uh, where people could be a bit more flexible. Uh, a lot of that depression and anxiety, I think, would diminish. So I, I, I'm actually quite positive that there are things that we can do that do not need to go down the medicalized route. Now, I would say that there is a different group and there is a sort of two or three percent group, which is quite different. 
they're not people often work. Uh, they've got poor housing. They've often had adverse childhood stress. Um, they have things like schizophrenia, psychosis, a whole other world of mental health, which is not really the mental health you see in the headlines. It's mm -hmm. not really the mental health that you hear very often about the celebrities. Most of the celebrities that talk about mental health, they're on the sort of more safe mental health, as it were, which is, as I say, it's back to anxiety and depression, which is much more fluid and much harder to sort of, you know, mu much more muddled up. But as I say, there is this two or three percent who do have much more severe and serious problems, much more long term. And and I think, you know, the way that the sort of mental health conversation has gone, um, we're, well, we're well, to, to, to me. Confusing. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I was going to say to me, and, and it may, you know, like I say, it's probably, you know, wrong or I'm sure probably considered inappropriate to say, but, you know, to me, these two or three or four percent that you talk about, you know, the, the ones with, with with psychosis or schizophrenia. Yeah. You know, I feel that those people are almost getting ignored. Because, Absolutely. Absolutely. Be, be, because the world's been taken over with, you know, with some 19 year old girl who says she's got anxiety issues because she, you know, because she's been look, look, looking at Instagram all day and, and you, only you, seven you people have liked the picture. You, you nailed it. And it's a very, very serious problem because the thing is, is if, if the sort of 95 percent, as it were, decide that they've got this medical condition and that they've got to rush and, you know, get get NHS help. I mean, there's no way the NHS can possibly cope. And absolutely, as you say, the ones that do have a really serious problem are not getting the focus and they're not getting the support. And they're being muddled in with people who do not have a mental health problem. They just have everyday life stressors, everyday, I mean, you know, stress.